We are recording. So I just, just right now, just got this text message from G3, one of our patrons, and he was sending me this thing about Gina and Travis. And it's from like Bravo. I could care less about them. Honestly, they have nothing going on. Honestly, both of them. Like, I don't, I don't, I just told them I don't care, like, I, at all. Welcome to your Daily Smash for Wednesday, May 31st. I'm Rick. I'm Kelly. And she does not care about Gina and Travis. Oh, here he is. I'm sorry. I'm going to turn this off. Okay, G3. Uh, and then I get one from Bree about Tamara coming mm-hmm. in. She's like, Granny Smith is coming in. <laughs> Granny <She's> like, Smith. <laughs> no. Don't forget well, this. No, I'm just getting two at the same time. It was yeah. bizarre. Just You're- now. Just right now. <laughs> You're getting, uh, you're getting it from the right and the left and a body punch? No. We don't care. We don't care. I don't care. I don't want to watch that show. I'm not going to. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube. Even though I know every single person on there. I do <laughs> like Armstrong, though. I do. You do? I do like her. All right. Well, maybe we should watch for her. No, I'm not watching. We also remind you to check out the Rick and Kelly show on Patreon.com. It's a longer version of this, unfiltered, uncensored. We get, we go deep on a lot of subjects and no commercial free. And this week we're doing a love it or list it on this house. Here's a little tease. We're on the roof deck. We have a a beautiful 20 by 40 pool down below with a brand new liner. We have a beautiful cabana painted white with brand new cushions and curtains and Lovely new cushions on our outdoor couch. The whole deck just got re- repainted and loose. Oh, there's bad fur poop replaced. now. Mm-hmm. So, so you can is, hang out out here. Yeah. And you can enjoy the views of the bay mm-hmm. and of this beautiful property, which is two thirds of an acre. We also want to remind you that our show is brought to you by Ilya Wine. Ilya, designed in New York, made in Spain. This is the Roble Red. Well, we didn't toast. I'm sorry. Was that bad? No, it's okay. Cheers. Cheers, Cheers, baby. Cheers, loves. Mm. (sighs) That is delicious. How good is this Roble Red? It is delicious. This is Kelly's favorite. Well, this is my favorite. Mm -hmm. The Roble Red is my is is. absolutely my favorite. I want to drink it. Rick likes the um the Moscatel, the white Macabeo, yeah. Macabeo. I do. Yeah. And, and the rosé is good. Yeah, the rosé really is good. good. The rosé is good here in the Hamptons in the summertime. Mm-hmm. Great drinking wine. But I have to tell you, this is, at the end of a day, we had a stressful day. I have to tell you about it. You guys are mm-hmm. going to die when you hear. But before we do, I want to remind you, you can go to Ilya.com and use the discount code Rick and Kelly 20 for 20% off Ilya wine delivered to your door. Yes. You don't have to and get out of your house. I, I, honestly, I think we should just get a whole case of, I mean, we should get a case of all of it, but I I do love the Roble Red. I know. It's Isn't fantastic. it great? It's fantastic. <laughs> I told you. It's really good. Um, I wanted to drink it before we left tomorrow. We're leaving at 4 a.m. It's 8 o'clock. And let me tell you, today went by like that. Yeah. We were busy all day. Yeah. Tell them about your interview. <gasps> I got an interview today, you guys. Please, <laughs> please, 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 please. please. Please, please say a prayer for me, please. Like, I've never wanted something so bad in my whole life like this. And I really, I believe in prayers. And if you guys could just say a short prayer for me, please, that would be so helpful. And they're praying for you to get this particular job. Um, So you guys know that I've always told you how um, the Food Network, you know, I do cooking with Kelly. I'm not the best cook. I say I'm a, I'm a mom cook. I don't know how to chop things. I'm not classically trained. I love cooking, and I told you about how Bravo told me I couldn't, I wasn't allowed to do uh, celebrity worst chefs, cooks, or whatever. And I've t- I've said this over and over and over. Can you hear me? I don't know if this is working. Uh oh. Can you hear me? Is I have on? this on. This is recording. Okay. Um, but I got a call today. Or a couple days ago, saying, remember I told you guys about the Food Network? Well, I went for an interview today on America's Worst Cooks. <laughs> and I was like, I'm like, please. I mean, like, this is meant for me. Okay? It is. It like, is. honestly, like, this is meant for me. This is, this is like my passion and I want to get better. So the, um, 
the um uh the executive producer, the showrunner, uh her name is Katz, her last name is Katz. Uh, and uh Katie. Katie. K- 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 Katie, beautiful lady. And <laughs> she she interviews me and she's like, What's the worst thing you've ever done? I go, I almost chopped my finger off. Jolie will tell you. She passed out because she saw my finger dangling Oof. when I chopped off my finger. I put a Pyrex on top of the stove and it shattered in little pieces. Mm-hmm. I uh, put things on fire. You yes. almost burned down your grandma's house. I, I almost burned down my grandma's house. Those I are great am, stories. But you guys know how I, I – But I, so anyway, she said this, this um, is like going through CIS, Culinary Institute. Like this is like – Going straight to, and I've always been a passion. So you're going to learn a lot. I'm going to learn a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so you, got you guys vote. know I love cooking. It's my passion. I'm not the best at it, and I'm not trained at it. And I've always wanted to go go to culinary school. So if you guys out there, please say a prayer for me that I get this um, America's okay. Worst Cooks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we also got our permit for the house today to rent it we got to rent what it a, a, a whole thing thank god rick put me on the house uh-huh. because he lost his wallet as you Didn't guys know an ID. and we had to get the permit notarized and i'm on the deed thank you very had much to, you're welcome baby uh-huh. we would have had to come all the way back here and get my passport to go back to southampton because the 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 town code Enforcer. office or whatever is all the way in southampton which is like 25 minutes from here but we're considered town of Southampton because we're not in West Hampton Beach. But uh, we're good. We're good for the next two years. And Wait, so also- listen to this. So get this. How effed up is this, okay? You t- tell them, wait, tell them how you can rent your house if you don't have a permit. Wait, tell them how screwed up, how backwards. I don't understand how things work like this or how um, if you don't have a permit, and they and a renter oh, oh, finds that. out. Wait. If if you rent your house without a renter's permit, and the tenant finds out you don't have a permit, they can stop paying you and stay in your house. Now, my reaction to that is okay. If you don't have a permit and you're supposed to have one, and you've rented your house to someone, and then they they come to find out you don't have a renter's permit, well, then obviously the person should leave because you're not legally allowed to rent your house. They can't just stop paying you and stay in your house. I don't think. I think they no, should. No, where can you go in a hotel and just stop paying in a hotel? Like you can't. You can't do that. If there's, if that, there's, that makes it's like backwards. Like if there, yeah, if there's a requirement for a renter's permit, and you don't have one, but the way they they describe it to us is that the tenant can check, and if they find out you don't have a renter's permit, then the, then they can just stop paying you and stay. Like it's an incentive for the renter. To find out if you have one. It's like a double punishment because they don't leave your house and you don't get paid. And I guess you get fined, I'm guessing, by the town. I just find that so ass backwards. So then uh, the lady, I had a whole thing in my head about how the whole thing is just so screwed up. Well, I, I, there was something else that happened today. Well, with, with, the, with the town where they were telling us, like, if we want to put it in a hot tub. Oh yeah, that. Then we can't. <laughs> we can't. We can't just put a hot tub between the pool and the house uh, without getting a new survey done and having an environmental inspector come out, and we have to file for some kind of waiver or something because we're within 150 feet of wetlands. But we already have a pool closer to the wetlands than the hot tub would be. Of course, it would be between the pool and the house, so it's not like encroaching on anything. It's already in an area that is livable space but even so they're going to make us fill out forms pay for inspections and beyond that so the, so the guy goes um you can grease people here he's no, the guy he's expediter expediter yeah. and i go what does that mean he goes you have to like <laughs> like grease him basically and i'm like what a freaking crock crap of bs and then, and then he said, uh, God, I hired an I expediter me. once. No. So then he goes, well, you have to hire a survey. A sur- like to, you, you have to have get to, a survey You have to get a, a survey done on your because property. He looks, up, he looks up the survey in the he, computer and it was, <laughs> it was done in 1976. And I'm saying I was born in 1975. And 
he goes, you have to call this guy. I go, that guy's probably dead. I'm almost 50 years old. He goes, you should call the guy on the survey. I'm almost 50 years old. (laughs) He's like, you should call the guy on the survey. I go, go, that that guy's probably dead like that. (laughs) He's probably been dead for 30 years. And and he goes, well, the family, you could call them. and The the family usually runs it. And I'm like, (laughs) I'm like, are you joking? Probably not going to start there. Huh? I wouldn't start with that guy. I would start with like, let me see who the best surveyors are in this town, in this area, on Google. Everything is just, I feel like everything here is backwards. I I do. I feel like everything is backwards. We've had some interesting- uh, I feel like I'm in the town of my cousin Vinny. Like (laughs) People look at me like, like, oh, I recognize you or I know who you are or where are you from? They look at me very weird. Like Uh, we went to this eat at this breakfast place- and oh, it, I'm putting that on this week's Rick and Kelly show on Patreon. That that experience at the breakfast place. I at, couldn't uh, believe it. What was it called again? The Lodi's. Lolly's. Lolly's. Lolly's Hut in Riverhead. Yeah. What an experience. We had the greatest waitress of all time. Oh, my God. It was like the soup Nazi. I swear. <laughs> it was, I could not stop laughing. Oh, we, we got but some fun But it's videos, just, it's, it's like, uh, it's, it's like, I feel like I'm like my cousin Vinny and I'm like, People look at me this line and goes, you have a nice outfit. And, and Rick goes, oh, yeah, and you blend. No, like- <laughs> you blend. Oh, yeah, you blend. <laughs> yeah, we've had some fun, good times. We, we're, we're, we're done, finally. We're, we're leaving here, like you said, 4 a.m. All this stuff really is to pack. I want to give a shout-out to my mom, Bobby. Yeah. Barbara Ann is really her name. And I want to say thank you, Bob, Mom for taking care of Julie, watching yeah, her, you. having a good time. I really, really appreciate it. Yeah. We've had some crazy runs here with him losing almost three thousand dollars. Um and yeah. just doing hard labor. Sucked. Doing hard labor. But having to we get these he- smashes out, yeah. cleaning, like painting. Like, the, the, the- it's really it's really difficult. So Yeah, we worked hard. Yeah. That screen porch project though. Beautiful. Turned out great. So then I, well, the weirdest thing was, is that we go to the town, right? And they're like, you have to go over there because you're in the wetlands Mm -hmm. and you have to go see these environmentalists. Yep. Okay. You know how I feel about those people. Okay. (laughs) The environmentalists are worrying about a freaking frog or a snail. All right. Like, Uh all right. Okay. And I'm all about preserving. I love a preserve. I love in Arizona, there's preserves and I, I appreciate them. But there's big mansions around here, and we're not killing any fish. And by the way, there's a pond right there that, like, breeds mosquitoes. I would totally get some shock, and I would shock (laughs) that pond so the mosquitoes don't come and bite you here. Anyway, so the lady lady goes, well, you need to get um, a septic tank. And I... Our friends down the street here, Justin Chop Shop, awesome place. If you ever come to West Hampton, you have to go to Justin Chop I'm Shop. I'm so sad that I didn't get it's a it's to a really there. gourmet uh, butchery. It's beautiful inside. It, Rick didn't go. I did. I, I love the guy. He's amazing. I love supporting small businesses. Anyways, so he told us about we want to add another bathroom to this this room. And you'll see if you're a patron, you'll see there's a another bedroom over here. And they're like, yeah, we just got a new septic tank and you could do a lot with a new septic tank. And I'm like, why isn't there like, like a, a sewer, a sewer line here? Why didn't they put a sewer line in? There's like a lot of houses around here. I think, I think the main reason, at least on this street is because the water table is so high. If like when I was digging fence posts in the yard, I dig down a foot, foot and a half. I they can go water. down to the, they can go down to the bedroom. They, they can put tunnels between to go and drive underneath. They could put oh, a sewer line. It could be done, in. but it would be really, really expensive. When I get the pool liner replaced and they and they take the water out and pull the old liner out, the the hole immediately fills with water. They had to have two pumps going nonstop, pumping the water out of the hole in order to install a new pool liner in the hole. So he's on wetlands. So so the the lady goes, um, I go, um, she goes, You're gonna have to get a new septic tank. I go, Yeah, I go, there's rebates on that, right? And she's like, yeah, th- there is. And you can go to the website and you can click. And she was showing us how you can do it. She's like, and you can probably get it probably f- for free if you don't have job. I go, we don't have jobs. <laughs> she Finally, like all my friends like that are like, they, they all work the system. I'm like, we don't have jobs. No, we both don't have jobs. Yeah, but we can And, and she goes, huh? We have this. We have you. Yeah. This is our job right now. Huh? 
Yeah. But we don't technically have jobs. Well, the, the good news is we might be get rebates on. So a the day. lady goes, she goes, um, she goes, okay, well you have to, she knew who we were. She goes, well, you have to live here full time. I'm like, okay, well, as soon as Julie graduates next year, she'll be a senior. We can live here full time. And am I going to get a free septic tank? Because that, <laughs> that septic tank costs like $60,000, right? Yeah, we'll, we'll see. So anyway. We'll see. might just sell the house I never get anything. I never get anything for free. I have to work for everything that I do. I've never had one thing given to me. It's like, it's about time <laughs> that I get rewarded for bad behavior. Yeah. Right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but we did take a walk through the town of Southampton, which is a really cute main street. Like, it's really... West Hampton has a great town. East Hampton has a great t- downtown. And Southampton... I, okay, so I always went to Ramona's house in Southampton. Southampton's, yeah. like, the uppity, like, very uppity. They have 75 Main. They have Cinderella's and whatever. Uh-huh. I can tell you, I swear to you, I swear, I promise you know I don't lie. I like West Hampton a heck of a lot better than Southampton. Really? And I have to tell you why. Okay. They have cuter boutiques. I love mixology. They have cute – and the, the the restaurants are like mom and pop. And and it's just it's just cuter. It, it is it, cute. It's just cute. Oh, yeah. I'm I, so I, glad I, to hear that. Yes. I, I have to tell you, it's uh-huh. adorable oh. down here. And it's, it's not as stuffy – it's not in people, oh, it's a poor man's Hamptons. No, it's not. These houses around here are four or five million dollars. They're not, it's not poor man. And it's cute. And I love I love that um feeling of um the 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 mom and pop and like I love that. Well, this house is rented this summer, but it's available September 1st. And it is a great place to spend September and October if you're interested. So you can find it on Airbnb. I don't know if we have a website set up yet specifically for this house. It's but Nine Tanner's Neck on Nine Airbnb. Nine Tanner's Neck Lane in West Hampton. You can search it. And by the way, Pickleball Party Town, uh, we, while we were here, the good news, because I did lose my we, wallet. We got three of our old tenants wanting to book again. We rented it. Three of them. We rented it for November. I think it's rented for February. And it's rented for April and probably May of 2024 while we've been here. And the March tenants were about they were going to book for march again because people who stay in our house love it yeah perry right now, oh they love it they want to go back like they have such a good time at pickleball party town yeah that they we're, we're getting repeat business yeah you never get repeat business in this house well the people who rent pickleball because party it, town want to come back so yeah. right now from december to march is still available on airbnb or, I or you know, go on pickleball party i want to know Doc. okay so wait wait Picklepartyhouse.com. Picklepartyhouse.com. It's a it's a blast over there. Yeah. I have to tell you. So I love those modular homes. Okay. So yeah. the lady at the at the at the city town hall. She said, I have a, one. It's a great. She's like, because Rick always thought that you had to do this footprint. Yeah. And she said, no. They want you to have a new septic tank. They want you to have a new house. They want it to be greener. They want it to be more energy efficient. And that's with new homes. So she's like, you can play with your land in a better way. They'll work with us. And Rick never knew that. See? I think that's a new wrinkle. Because back in the day, it was always about your footprint. But now, because because they're trying to- Go green. So we could- You know what? I'm glad everyone's going green. (laughs) Now, I never right. liked it before. Can I rant about Optimum real quick? Oh, God. Oh, yes. So I go to uh, – we had a geek squad come here and help us set up some some technical gear in the house. And he, t- he says, oh, you can get a better cable box. There's a better cable box. So I went to Optimum and I said – I brought all the cable boxes with me and I said I, want, I was no, told – No, they said they, they can either come and it would be $60 – or you can just go to Optimum and swap them out for newer ones, okay? We didn't know newer ones meant Apple TV boxes, which well, we already have. Like, back, I thought those were obsolete because we, we have smart TVs and they're already in there. So well, I'm they, like, why they, do you have to have a an Apple? Like, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> well, he told me there was a upgraded Spectrum or Optimum box. I get there. They're like, no, this is it. This, you don't, there isn't one. But you could put in an Apple TV box. And they have these new 4K Apple TV boxes. They're 4K, so it's crisper. I'm like, okay. So he gives me three, and he says, 
open one, try it out. If you like it, then open the others and, and hook them up. I did. I opened one. I liked it. I opened the others, hooked them up. One of them didn't work. The remote didn't work. And by the way, we had Rick's friend from Fox in IT. Teddy. Teddy, the big, huge guy. You guys saw him? He, or, or my Patreon saw him because we do these Zooms. He's an IT. Well, he's actually, a, he's a cameraman, but he's very technically minded. Okay. I thought he was an IT there. No, but he's, he's, got, he's a tech guy. He's I mean, a tech he guy. Anyway, he came over. He goes, that thing, that remote control doesn't work. We, and we charged it. We did every, And we paired it. We yep. charged it. We did all the necessary things that okay. we're going to so, do. So we go back to Optima with the cable, with this Apple TV box that doesn't work. And Kelly actually went in for because it was like ran it, to Home Depot. No, it was like it was like the government. It was like ten people deep, and I had to have my job interview at three thirty. Right, and it was two o'clock. And Rick calls me and he goes, "Dude, like I, I, we we can't do this." I go, "You know what? I'll stay here. You go to Home Depot, uh, and and, come back and, and, and we'll come back, and then we'll go do yeah. the interview." So they tell Kelly. We can't take this Apple TV box back that we sold you because you opened the box. And I'm like, what do you mean? Of course we opened the box. It doesn't work. So now that we know, we couldn't have known that it doesn't work without opening the box, but we did. Now we realize it's broken. So give us another one. Nope. You have to send it back to Apple. No. Or go the, to Best Buy. No, they, they told me to go to Best I go, is there an Apple store around here? Well, of course I'm in the town of my cousin Vinny. Okay. All right. <laughs> They're like. No, go to Best Buy. So I go to Best Buy. I bring it in there. I wait in line. And then the guy goes, uh, you're going to have to send this back to Apple. So I'm like, F this. We get back in the truck. We go so, back so no, to no, no, Optima. No, no, no. We go back. Now it's 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 3 o'clock. Mm -hmm. And from Riverhead to here is a 20 good minutes. 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah. And, and interviews at 3.30. So I so might. Yeah, so, yeah, go ahead. I walk ahead. in there with, it, with its box. I say, listen. You sold me this. It doesn't work. All I want to do is replace it. And I have tenants coming. I need that TV to work. And we're leaving town first thing in the morning. She's like, well, if you want to yell at somebody, you should yell at the guy who sold this to you. Yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me right now? Like, you got to help me, me out she here. She told me that too. So she gave me a mini box that she's not supposed to give out to customers, but she gave it to me as a make good. And I'm sure I'm still paying for it. To hook up with instructions and everything. Bring it back here. Hook it up. It's not working. I call Optimum Technical Support. They tell me, oh, yeah, that it's mini box isn't compatible with your router, with your system. I'm like, well, she would have known whether it was compatible or not because she has my whole account right there in front of her on the computer screen. So I'm like, are you kidding me? Not only will they not take back the box they sold me that's defective, they gave me a box that doesn't work with my system. And now what? Well, the good news okay, is... Okay, I want to ask you a question. I, What's worse, Cox Cable or Optimum? Oh, my God. Cox, I'm sorry. Cox is the worst. <laughs> and I think Cox has bill, bill collectors coming after me now. <laughs> and it wasn't about the money. It was like 190 bucks. I'm like, this is BS. We I sent, sent you in. back every piece of equipment you asked for. You lost just, it, not me. I'm so mad at them. I'm going to go to jail because I didn't pay my Cox bill. No, but, they're coming. They're, I think the bill collector ruined there, my yeah. credit. So <laughs> it's not worth it. Yeah. But I went back to Optimum. No, I, no. So I, I plugged in the Apple box that I still have where the remote is, does not work. But by some miracle, the TV remote was synced with the Apple. So the box itself worked. And at least for now, that third TV is functional oh, but f you optimum and f you cox yeah cox go suck on your cox <laughs> <laughs> um i don't know what that was no i'm just saying go on on their cox i don't know what happened to my notes i just did i just delete all the notes probably we've had a hell of a day can i tell you we've had a hell of a day and we're leaving at 4 a.m and it's gone like my, this. My computer's acting weird. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait to get out of here. And oh. by the way, I've had a good time here. Yeah. But I'm glad I'm not in Newport Beach. I guess the, the weather is horrible there. I've, I've, I've 
enjoyed it here. I've never seen it do that before. You, no, because you're going like this. It's on there. That's oh, is why. that why? <laughs> but but it's not. It says I have no notes. Oh, here we go. There it is. Here it is. He okay. had his phone on the keyboard, and it was going. <laughs> it was like glitching like this. Okay. Uh, sorry, guys. It's been a long day and a long couple of weeks. In the news now. In the news. The 10 Real Housewives who were accused of being bullies. I got this in my Google alert, so I thought it was in the news. Because <laughs> you guys know I love those Google alerts because every time I get a Google alert, it's freaking from Negative Nancy, a.k.a. Screen Rant. Can you show the, the pictures, though, of all of us? I don't have them here, but I'll try and find them. Over the years, the Real Housewives have become – I'm not even going to read this nonsense. Number 10. These are the 10 Real Housewives who were accused of being bullies. Not – Bullies, but accused of being bullies. So that's how they couch it. Number 10, Leanne Locken, friend mm -hmm. of yours, right? Yeah. Number nine, Brandy Glanville, former friend of yours. Mm -hmm. Eight, Tamara Judge. She should be number one as far as I'm concerned. I, I, me too. Seven, Diana Jenkins. I think she's number one. Six, Vicki Gunvalson. Is she a bully? No. Five, Luanne De La No, Sets. I don't think Vicky's a bully. No. Number four, Jen Shaw. Now behind bars in a Texas prison. Number three, Erica Jane. I don't think Erica Jane's a bully. She's tough. She's tough, but she doesn't bully people. She tells people to shut the F up. She did threaten Be people. Last season, she was threatening people on that show. Threatening I think them. a bully is somebody that comes after somebody. I was, she actually, I was attacked. I think she is a bully. You do? Yeah. Number two, Kelly Dodd. <laughs> <laughs> How come I'm not number one? You called Emily Simpson's husband a little bitch. That's why I'm a 13. bully? I don't know. Because he's the one who was inserting himself in an unnecessary way. And I don't like men telling women that they can't sit there. Okay? I'm, I want to read this description. You tell me if there's anything about bullying in here besides that one thing where you called him a little bitch. I called him a little bitch because he was saying I, I, I shouldn't sit there. What hasn't Kelly Dodd done during her time on RHOC? Between denying the coronavirus was happening by claiming it was God's I, I way of I, thinning the herd. I didn't deny corona. You didn't deny it was happening? Yeah. <laughs> I knew it was happening. <laughs> My friend. You I, suck, Screen I, Rant. You're, you're an idiot. <laughs> you're not a journalist. <laughs> Calling Emily Simpson's husband a little bitch. I okay, did. That, you know, I get that. He's a dude. She has made quite the name for herself. Really? Kelly was known to fight dirty. You know you what? you fight dirty? I do. I do. Oh. And this trait made her the ultimate bully. Oh, I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> Number if one. If you guys rewatch these old episodes, yeah, these girls came after me. They bullied. They bullied me. They had other girls coming after me, yeah. for their own benefit well, to attack me. I just stuck up for myself, right? But I don't go after. I don't go after people's like marriages. I don't go uh, do investigations. I don't get other people that know other people to have them get bullied. Those other girls do, yeah. All right, we gotta go. I don't try to get. I don't try to get people drunk. We're at thirty minutes here. Um, number one, by the way, was Teresa Judice. We uh, we appreciate you guys watching the smash. Tell your friends if you're enjoying this show. Don't forget to subscribe, and we will see you from Newport Beach uh, next time. Yes, well, are we? We probably won't do this tomorrow, will we? When we get home, we'll be home at nine thirty in the morning. I know I have so many appointments. We can not. My one nails out are night. nasty. My <laughs> eyebrows are gross. My hair. I have like. Roots. We're I'm, gonna get I, all that fixed. We're getting back to reality. I get my back pellet to tomorrow. <laughs> I get my pellet tomorrow. Good night, everybody. Good night. See ya. Have a great day.